Hey, hello everyone, and thank you very much for joining this webinar. Um, my name is Richard, I'm from the Seneca team. My job is looking after schools, making sure that all schools and teachers are getting the most out of the platform that we have. So that brings me here in front of you today. And what we're going to look at is we're going to work on making sure that you understand uh, three different platforms today. So we're going to first, we're going to look at Google, Google Classroom, we're going to look at Microsoft Teams, and we're going to look at Seneca. And we're going to look at how those how Seneca works with both of those options and if um, and yeah, how they sort of integrate with each other. Now, each of these apps and each of these options are really powerful and useful on their own. However, there is even more potential once you bring in different ideas of um, yeah, using them together because it basically max, uh, maximizes the potential that each of them have. So I'm going to talk through how each of them work. I'm going to give you some basic functionality in each of them um, and show you how, how it all works. To start with, um, if I just want to say like some housekeeping stuff, if you have questions on anything that I talk about or anything you want to ask about more generally, then please do free to put them in the chat. Um, you'll find you won't be able to unmute yourself on this call, but um, yeah, so if you put any questions in the chat, what I'll do is I'll come back to them periodically throughout the session. And that will make that will mean that I that you will be able to uh, have any questions answered that, that you have. Um, okay, so without um, going any further, what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen with you, and I'm going to start by going through just some basics of what Seneca actually is, um, and how it works um, from uh, how it's been developed, basically. Okay. So to start off with um, what Seneca actually is and how that's different to something like Google Classroom and Microsoft Teams. So Seneca is a homework and distance learning platform. It provides content for students, it provides analysis and marking for teachers, and it's different to something like Google Classroom or Microsoft Teams, which are they're, they're two very similar products, just one from Google, one from Microsoft. And they are more um, forums, so they provide you an opportunity to talk to um, talk to your students, to communicate with your students, to share things, but they don't provide any content in themselves. They're purely a messaging service. So that's the difference between what Seneca is compared to something like Teams and, and Classroom. And some of the best things I think about worth, are worth um, mentioning about Seneca, first of all. Um, is that first of all it's based on cognitive science so what has been shown to be effective in learning is automatically based it baked into the platform um, just before I go on I've got some people saying that they can't hear me um, can can anyone hear me can someone just confirm that that you can hear me yeah okay great um, so yeah I'm sorry for the people who can't hear obviously they, they can't hear me apologizing but um, but yeah, OK, so um, thanks for confirming. Um, so secondly, everything on there is I have sort of mentioned this already, but everything on there is automated in terms of marking. So hopefully it will save you time with your with your workload because you get some nice data. You can track students progress. You can understand how well they're doing from your um, from your account, from your teacher account. So that's what happens. Also, I think and I'll show you how this all looks in a second. Also, Seneca is adaptive, and what we mean by that is the differentiation that happens is um, we, uh, the differentiation that happens within our platform happens automatically. So there's no need for you to worry about differentiating the work or anything like that. The system automatically picks up what students do and don't know um, and adjusts the content accordingly. So that could be things like if a student appears to be struggling with a certain concept, it will give students more support around that, con that concept. But if a student is um, doing really well, um, we will move them on quicker to harder concepts that they will find more challenging. So that does two things. Obviously, it keeps your students stretched, but it also keeps them motivated. If they're going through content they know and understand, they might get bored. Whereas if they're being a bit more stimulated, they're, they're more likely to, to maintain engagement. Now, uh, and lastly, everything I show you on this platform is free and ready, and, and ready to use. So you could go up and go in and just create an account tonight and start using this for free there's no need to talk to any department budget holders or anything like that you can literally just go and start using it straight away um, so that's always a bonus now i talked a bit about cognitive science and how that has uh, been sort of underpinned what we do and how we've developed our platform and just to we obviously worked with a lot of experts on this to try and make sure that what we were doing was effect as effective as possible 
And what we did was we we did a randomized control trial just to make sure that our implementation of the theory was effective in practice. And we worked with just over 1,100 pupils. And what we found was that when we compared it to a another independent learning tool, something like um, a revision guide, when we saw um, the very similar pretest results that you can see on the graph here, what we found was that the post-test results showed that the students who were on Seneca did over twice as well. So we see that as you know a validation of the way we've implemented this theory um, and the impact that, that Seneca can have for, for your students. If you want to read about that, or feel free to ask any questions, of course, if you want to know more, but you can also read about it in these journals because it was peer reviewed and published the research. So um, yeah, you can go and read about it in these, in these places. If you just do a quick Google search, you'll find them. And in terms of what we have on Seneca, so we have content right from Key Stage 2 up to the end of A-levels, and everything on there is either linked to the national curriculum at Key Stage 2 and 3, or it's linked to the specific exam boards at Key Stage 4 and 5. So um, everything there is, is ready to be used um, and ready to go, and you can be assured that whatever your students see um, on, the, on the system is what they need to know for their exams. And you've got some, some numbers down here in terms of how many people have used it, you've got about three and three quarter million pupils using it um, and coming up to 200,000 teachers and 40,000 parents. There's lots of people using it, which we're really pleased. We've been able to help over the last um, last six months or so, especially, but before then and continuing on um, as things continue to, to change and develop. So I'm gonna show you, as I say, what happens now, how it all works in terms of the platform now. So I'm gonna flip on to Seneca, first of all, um, and what you're, the first thing you'll see is we have a teacher account here, which this is the screen that you can see when you first log in to your premium account, or sorry, to, to, your, to your teacher account, apologies. Um, and what you'll see is that actually we've got some classes here, we've got an option to create a class down here, which will help you. Um, and I'll just show you through the process very quickly, but it's very straightforward, you can just click create class. You give the name, give it a class name or whatever you want to call it, and then create class and as simple as that, you've created the first class. And then you've got a bit of setup to do. So you've just got these four steps to take. Uh, you've done step one already. The second one is to add some courses uh, for your students to study. So you can just go in here and click add courses. And this will bring up a whole load of courses that you can add. You can use these filters down the side or the search at the top to help you. Um, but you just select the courses that you want to add, whatever it is. So let's go for these five, six courses I've selected here. And then I just scroll to the top and it's add courses at the top. And then I can just think about creating an assignment. So the first, the next thing you do is create an assignment and you select one of those six courses that I've just chosen whichever one is appropriate for the assignment you want to set. And this is where you're saying to students, I want you students to do this topic um, and I want you to do it in this way. So you take these, um, these sections, if you're familiar with the Edexcel GCC spec, you'll recognize this breakdown straight from the specification. So things are easy to find. Um, and say you wanted to set one of these, uh, one or two of these, you just click these little check boxes down the side here um, and select as many or as few as you wish. And um, when you're ready, you just click assign. There's also this little suggestion of how long it should take at the top here, which is quite handy. But when you just click assign, what that will do is it will allow you to put in a name and a start and an end date. So that's really useful if you're thinking of planning into the future in terms of making sure that you provide the content for maybe a whole half term. You could plan it all in one go and it would only appear for the student after that start date is passed. So then as soon as that, you've created your first assignment. Now you may have noticed we haven't added any students in here. We've still got students as a zero here. Um, but the next stage is where the first sort of integration and the first steps come in to providing you um, an integration with Google Classroom and Microsoft Teams. So if you click invite students, um, you see you've got a few options, but I'll focus on these two middle ones here. And what I'll do is I'll talk you through both of those processes, um, starting with Google Classroom. So if you click on the Google Classroom button, that will load up Google Classroom. 
And the first thing you need to do is choose a class to send it to. So I'll send it to this year 10 class as an example. And then I'll choose an action, which in this case is four different actions you can take on this. For sharing a um, invite link, I would create an announcement. Um, and I'll show you where that goes and how that's different to the other options in a moment. When you click go, that then generates this link, which students will be need to click on to join the class. So you can write a message, something like this. Click the link, join the class, whatever it is that is useful um, to tell your students. You've got some options at the side here. You can choose to select it for particular students if you want. Um, and you can also choose to post it, maybe save it, save it for later or schedule it for another time or just post it straight away. Um, but when you're ready, just click post. And the nice thing about Google Classroom is it always gives you an option to view it. So if you click on that view button, it will take you through to Google Classroom and it will put your, it will put your message that you just made at 1612 into the stream. So the stream is like the message board and this is where students and you can communicate with one another. Um, and if students are to click on this link, they will just be taken onto Seneca. First of all, they'll be asked to sign in if they haven't signed in already. But as soon as they're signed in, they can um, just get this pop-up message on their account, which when it loads, it will just say, you've just joined class name, which is the name I gave this class. Um, and then when the student clicks continue, it will take them through. You'll see those six um, courses I added, and you'll also see the assignment I've made as well. So students can just go straight in and start learning. So simple as that, you've done that on Google Classroom. Let me show you the same process on Microsoft Teams. So this time I'm gonna invite my students on Microsoft Teams. So again, it makes sense for me to click on Microsoft Teams. And this time it's, it's a very similar process, the difference between Microsoft Teams and Google Classroom. Is Google Classroom is, is separated into classes, whereas Microsoft Teams is separated into teams and channels. So teams could be something like your department and a channel could be a class within that department. So if I just do, I've got a year 10 maths group set up here. And um, again, this link's been automatically generated. I can put something like, click the link again, whatever message it is you wanna write and share in the bottom corner here. And then you just get a confirmation from, um, from Microsoft Teams that that's been shared. So I go into my Teams and I'll show you what that looks like. You'll see maths here, it's got bold. It means that that means an, there's a new message there. And if I click on that, you'll see this at 1614, click the link with a missing space. Uh, and if I clicked on that link, it would take me through the same process to join in to, to Seneca. So that's adding, students to your class. Now, hopefully your students then start joining um, through the link and you will then want to be able to see what your students do off the back of that. So I'm just gonna move into a class that actually has some students in so you can see how that looks. Um, so if I come in here, I've got 30 students here um, and what you can do to see any assignments that have been completed is use this assignments feature here. So if I click on assignments, You'll see, first of all, upcoming assignments that are there, um, but you can also look at past assignments as well. So say, for example, I wanted to see how well students have done on this um, assignment that I've set, I can click on it. And the first thing you'll see when it loads is that you've got some basics at the top here. So how many have completed, how many were late, how many didn't, didn't complete. And you've also got average scores as well for the se sections that I set. And then I can scroll down and I can see all the data for my students based on this assignment. So I can see a nicely red, amber, greened, what my students have and haven't done. If I click on the header of any column, I can sort by that column so I can see who's not done so well. And um, if I click again, it will tell me who's done really well. Um, and the same with the status. So if I wanna see who did it late, it was Braxton. Um, and you can see uh, all the information you need. Now this stage is obviously really useful. You can then think about how you're gonna put some intervention in place to support your students off the back of this. Um, but we also try to make it really easy to put that intervention in place. Um, now you'll, rec you'll remember that when I earlier talked about the adaptive learning of Seneca, that every time a student um, logs on and studies a course, the courses they study will adapt to the individual. 
So that happens when someone revisits as well. So say somebody revisits your uh, the same session again, it will remember what happened last time and the session will be different based on, on how well they did. So we sort of built that, fe that feature into Seneca to make sure that it's, it's quick and easy for you to basically act on this data you've got here. And that's using the smart reassign function we've got at the top. So if you click on smart reassign, what you'll find is you've got three options. You can either choose to reset this work for someone who didn't complete the work, which in this case was nobody. You can set it for anyone who got their best scores less than 50%, or you can set it for less scores, uh, best scores less than 80%, or you can select multiple of these if you want. So you could do incomplete and less than 80%. It's up to you what you, what you select. But then you can just reassign it and you give it a name. And, in, and a start on an end date, whatever suits you. And in just a few clicks, you've given a really tailored um, second follow-up assignment for your students. And again, if you want to share this on Google Classroom, Microsoft Teams, you can do, um, which I'll show you in a second. Um, but we have, um, you see here, each student has been given a really specific set of um, sessions to complete. So this Felton's only given one session, Roel's being given two sessions to complete. So depending on how well they did last time, they'll get a really specific um, way, give, be given a really specific follow-up task on that. So it's really uh, powerful potentially. Now I dismissed it earlier because I wanted to explain the reassign feature, but this um, share to Google Classroom Microsoft Teams will be an option when you um, add, uh, yeah, when you share, create an assignment. So you can click on one of these. If I click on Google Classroom first, it will again take you through to Classroom. Again, you pick your class. This time you choose another action, which this time I'll create an assignment. And when I click go, again, I give it a title. And the link to access the assignment and then i can see there's some options down the side here the one the due date is obviously quite obvious if you're using the mark book in in google classroom you can set a number of points for it um, and you can also select a topic which i'll leave blank for the moment because i'll show you what topics look like in a second but either when then when you assign you get that same option to view it when it loads and that will again take you through to the stream on your classroom And you'll see this assignment I've just set here. Now, the difference of assignments, it goes into the stream, but it also goes into what's called classwork on Google Classroom. So if I click on here, you'll see the Seneca assignment. Uh, I've misspelt here. Um, and at the moment, it's just at the top. So it's important to say on Google Classroom and Microsoft Teams, whatever you see, the student also sees in the same way. So um, at the moment, I've, it's just at the top here, but I would li might like to organize that to help my own um, class as in my, like my own organization of the class, but also to help my students find the information they need. So if you want to rearrange this, you could have done it from when you created the assignment, but you can also just drag and drop. So I can just drop it under assignment two here if I want. Oh, sorry, under topic two here if I want. Now, unfortunately, data doesn't transfer across automatically into the Markbook on Google Classroom, but you can download data from Seneca and then upload it onto Google Classroom if that's useful. So let me show you again um, the process on Teams. So this time, if I click Teams, it will take me through there. And again, it's the same setup as before. I choose my Year 10 Maths group. I give them a name. Uh, sorry, I give them uh, some instructions if I want. And then I share in the bottom corner. So again, when I go into my Microsoft Teams, you'll see here at 1621, click the link. And if students clicked on that link or the equivalent link in Google Classroom, it will just take them through to that assignment and they can start learning. Now you've seen all the data you can get off the back of that, but you also probably want to see how well your students are doing if they just study independently as well. And for that, you can use the Insights tab. And it's the same um, setup pretty well. So you can again choose a course and a metric. So I didn't mention this before, but you can change different metrics. So you can see the most recent attempt, the best and worst scores the average score, 
how many times they've done it and also the total study time. And then also the date range as well. So you can choose the last 30 days or you can select whatever it is that's useful. Um, and also if you wanted to, you could put a custom range in there as well if you wanted just to do from a specific date to a specific date. But when you're ready, you just click select sections. And just like when we were creating the assignment earlier, we pick the sections we want to see data for, whatever it is, and you click select. And then that data again comes up nice and presented in here for each student. And this is them doing work in assignments. It's also them work doing work, work independently. It's any work completed on Seneca will show in this insights tab. And if you want to, I mentioned about downloading to CSV earlier. If you want to do that, you just click this button at the top and that will download a spreadsheet that, that you can then use uh, in whatever way you wish. Now, the final place to see data is in the students tab. And this is where you go um, and you see the sort of the highest level overview of your students and what they're up to. So you can see here, we've got learning time, we've got average score, we've got sessions completed and we've got correct answers. And that's for this date range and this course that we've selected. So that gives you an idea of overall how well your students are doing, how much they're doing. So you can really understand how they are, um, yeah, how much they're spending on it, how much time they're spending and you can use that to think about maybe rewards and things um, but if you want to drill down into the data you can just use this insights tab here so that's the last thing i wanted to show you on on seneca for the teach platform there's one more thing on teams that i think is really useful and that's these uh, seneca um tabs that you've got at the top here that I've, I've added at the top here and it's a really useful feature if you want to set up your teams so it's nice and easy as you see here i just click, i've got a little tab here and if i click on it it will load Seneca within my Microsoft Teams browser. And to set that up, it's very easy. You just pre press this plus button and it will load a whole host of different apps that you can add. So everything from Microsoft products like Word and PowerPoint to third party products like, you know, some other things down here. You can also add, as I said, Seneca. So if you just add a website, um, you can call it whatever you want. Um, and then you can create a URL. So any URL from any wherever it's useful for you to link into, you can just copy it from your uh, from your um, search bar at the top of your page into here, um, and that will make it easy. You can post about it in the channel if you want. So you can say actually you can actually link to students. So you could say, hey students, go to this section uh, on the go to this tab to do geography revision, for example, and it could be a link to the geography course. Um, or we can leave it as it is. And then when you click save, that will just create that Seneca 3 tab that I've just created. And it's as simple as that if you've uh, created that tab. So that's all I wanted to say. I'm gonna just gonna come back, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen now and come back and see if there are any questions from anyone uh, for the final few minutes. It looks like there's some good questions. So if you don't have a chance to ask a question yet, please do um, pop them in. Um, Okay, so question from Jay Lapworth is, can you preview a course? So the answer is, of course, um, at the top of your teacher account, it will just say student platform. So you can either go in there and have a play around with, all, with what your students um, are struggling with, or so what your students are seeing, so you can see the whole account. Or when you set an assignment, there's an option next to each section, just says preview. If you just click on that, it will take you through to the correct section. Um, a question from Sharon it would be better to position the assignments above the courses because some of my students have started the courses from the beginning thinking that's what they had to start with okay uh, that's taken on board Sharon thanks for the thanks for the feedback I'll, I'll pass it on to the team uh, a question from Joanne is if some students are isolating and using teams and some are in class in person can you send some of them the link via teams and some of them the link by email um, so the answer is uh, so you'd have to have a different you could do that, but they'd have to be in a separate channel. So say you had a channel for the students who were isolating at home and a, um, a separate channel for the whole class, then you could just upload it to the channel that um, that is for your students who are isolating at home would be a way around to do that. Um, unfortunately, um, Teams doesn't provide that functionality, but Google Classroom does. Question from um, Maya Maha, apologies if I'm saying your name correctly. But uh, do you do you have to have a G Suite account for Google Classroom um, or an Office 365 account for Teams? 
to engage in this way. So uh, no, so I don't have either of those accounts. Um, so you can see that I was able to access both of them. You can just create an account um, through there. Um, if you're in a school, they, they will try and get you to sign up. Um, I don't, uh, yeah, that you'll need to talk to sort of Google about that, that you don't need to have a G Suite account or a 365 account to start using this. Question from Jay Cooper is, can you import classes from Google Classroom into Seneca? So no, unfortunately not. Um, that's not something we, we provide, but as you say, as I say, you can just share that link straight into Google Classroom and um, it, it, once students click on it. I'm glad, so Sue says, thank you. Um, set, uh, being able to set Seneca via Teams will be uh, revolutionary and time-saving. So I'm pleased we could help Sue. Um, question from uh, Gitika. Again, apologies if I didn't say, I'm saying your name correctly. Um, can you send me a recording of this? So that's a good point. Um, so yeah, this recording is live, um, being live streamed on YouTube right now. So if you want to have access to it, what you need to do is go to our Seneca CPD YouTube channel um, and you can just go ahead and watch this back or share it with your colleagues or whatever you want to do. Okay, question from uh, Kaylee says, in classes on Seneca, can you divide them into subgroups? So you can't divide them into subgroups. What you can do is you can just set assignments for particular students. Um, if, so if there's a particular student group of students you want to set an assignment for, you can just set them that work. But don't forget within each uh, session, not all students will see exactly the same thing. So it will be differentiated within the session um, as well. Question from Daniel uh, says that he has had a look around and he couldn't find BTEC Sport. You noticed there was a request for a course. What's the rough turnaround? So um, as you can imagine, Daniel and anyone else who's asked a question about courses, our courses take quite a long time to produce um, and a lot of resource. So we can't just magic them basically out of thin air, um, but also there's sort of a, a list of priorities based on basically the courses we have don't have um, currently and the number of students that are enrolled in them. So I don't have a particular lead time for any courses, I'm afraid, but we do them basically on a priority basis uh, based on how many students take that course. Um, we've currently cover about 95% of the, the courses um, uh, of the exams sat in the in England and Wales. So we have good coverage as it is, um, but yeah, we want to add more. We want to add things like VTech Sport in the future. Question from Angela says, I deleted a class by mistake uh, from a student. Um, if you do, will you get back, back his score? So yeah, if you could delete a class, uh, you can just set up the class again, or if you delete a student, just add them again and the data will come back in. Okay, so um, that looks like all the questions. So thank you very much for joining. Um, I hope you found this useful. If you have any questions um, or need help getting started, what I'd suggest is if you go to your log into your account and then there'll be a um, an option to have a live chat with our customer service team and you'll get through to my colleague Olivia uh, who will be able to help you with any questions that you have but otherwise I hope you found this useful and um, yeah thank you very much for joining have a great evening